We're here with Hofstra Pride head wrestling coach Rob Ansbach. And coach, 10 days into official wrestling season, uh, practice season, just two weeks away from the start of the regular season, how has practice been going? Practice is going real well. Uh, guys are working hard. Uh, I think, um, you know, they, they've done a great job over the summer. They continued that through preseason and now right into uh, the, official start of, uh, the official start of the season. They look good. We're healthy. And um, I think they're starting to really get ready for that uh, home opener on November 3rd. Now you come back with five starters from last season, plus a couple of new additions. Uh, and you have WrestleOffs this, this coming Friday. Uh, tell us a little bit about, first of all, the, the five returnees, which include two Hofstra uh, NCAA qualifiers and Jamie Franco and Luke Bight. Uh Tell us about the returnees. Well, we're looking for those guys to uh, add a lot of leadership to uh, the younger guys and, stu and uh, that type of thing. You know, Jamie and Luke, uh, Jamie's been out at the national tournament uh, two times now, and uh, same thing with Luke. So they have quite a bit of experience going for them, and, uh, you know, they, they are really leading by example with their work ethic and, and the things that they're doing, coming in and getting extra workouts. They've been doing that all preseason long, and, and that, again, has continued right through uh, the start of the season. And so a lot of the younger guys who are incoming freshmen are seeing that and starting to follow follow that that type of routine and that's really the type of culture we want to have here at Hofstra is where guys are coming in on their own getting the extra workouts and, and doing the, the little bit of extra that you need to do uh, to be a successful program um, every team in the country works out two hours a day from either you know 2.30 to 5, uh, 4.30 or 3 to 5 whatever their time schedule is and it's really getting those extra workouts in that not everybody in the country is doing that's really going to separate yourself and, and the program and now you've got Jamie going from 133 to 125 this year, replacing Stevie Bonanno, who has graduated. Uh, how is that going to help Jamie? Well, um, Jamie did a great job for us, um, wrestling up at 133 pounds the last two years. He's really a 125 pounder. Uh, just you know, was was very close with wrestling with Steve, but just couldn't beat him. So um, now at this point in time, he's a, he's a you know, further on along in his career, um, he's done a great job of shrinking his body a little bit to make 125 pounds. But, you know, at the end of the day, he was 125 pounders. He's pretty short. Um, and he did a great job for us putting on mass to rep be able to be very good at 133 pounds. But this is a much more natural way for him. I expect him to go out there and, and do some really big things this year. Uh, you know, he should find a lot more success. Guys are going to be a little bit lighter. Um, and, and more his size, you know, he gave up a lot of leverage in some of his matches where guys were just really a lot taller than him and it put him at a disadvantage uh, a lot of times, but he did a great job for us at 133 pounds and I look for him to have a very, very big year this year. And at 133, the long-awaited official uh, competition for Jamel Hudson, who had an outstanding career in high school here on Long Island. Uh, tell us a little bit about Jamel. Well, Jamel had a great redshirt year. Um, followed that up with the, his spring tournaments by placing uh, sixth at the uh, Field of Junior and then placing third at the University of Nationals. Uh, he continued to work hard throughout the, the summer, and um, you know we expect a lot from Jamel, but the first thing he has to do is he's got to beat uh, Maverick Passaro, who you know is looking to wrestle at 133 pounds too. So it's kind of nice for us to be able to know that we, we're going to have a very good wrestle-off, and we're going to be in good shape no matter which guy wins that wrestle-off. And Maverick is a transfer from Rutgers and uh, redshirted last year. Yeah, Maverick was, um, you know, got injured down at Rutgers, so he didn't get a lot of competition. So this is kind of really like his first year uh, in the college room, and he's showing um, signs of coming along. You know, Maverick was is a local guy uh, from Eastport South Manor, and he was a New York State champion two years ago. So you know, he's he's got a lot of upside uh, to his wrestling. He's done a great job in the room, and, and each day I'm watching him wrestle, he gets a little bit better, and um, that's all you can ask for right now. And that's going to be a very good wrestle off. I'm I'm curious to see what happens in that one, and it should be uh, again whichever guy represents us at that weight class is going to be is going to be a lot of expectation. And 141, you have the return of Luke Bight, the senior uh, NCAA qualifier, and and Luke continues to get better year after year. Yeah, Luke is you know he, he's a guy that. Um, we, we've been waiting for for the last two years where we thought he could have been a guy that's going to get on that podium and be an All-American, and it just really hasn't worked out for him yet. But, um, you know, it's hard to say that he's made a, a huge step or a lot of progress because he was one of our leading guys last year. But I see a big difference in him in, in his, the way he's going about what he's doing, um, the, the work he's put in the summer, everything about him just says, you know, 
this guy is ready to to have that year where people are, are, are going to be watching out for him. I know last year he had a couple big wins. He beat Dardanes, who was an All-American. He beat Nevinger, who was an All-American. But we're looking for him to be doing that on a consistent basis, not just here and there. And, and I think he's put in the summer um, to, to get that done. And at 149 this year, a, a good battle that you anticipate uh, Cody Ruggerello returning, but also a newcomer and some newcomers. Yeah, you know, we have Cody, who's definitely going to be starting the year for us at 149 pounds, and he really came on late towards the end of the year. He, he kind of was slow in the beginning, and part of that was our fault because um, we were bumping him around in weight classes. But once he got settled in at 149 pounds, you saw every time he went out and wrestled, he wrestled a little bit better, wrestled a little bit better, and, and ended up placing third at the conference for us. So he had a great end of the year. He continued that through the spring and the summer, and uh, he's made some big improvements. Um, we also got a transfer camp to Sari, who won't be eligible first semester, but we're going to be looking for that wrestle off in the second semester. And uh, Cam was you know fourth in the country as a true freshman. He comes in from Ohio State program where they had high expectations and we expect him to do some, some big things here at Hofstra. And at 157, uh, Nick Turdick, who wrestled at 165, drops down a weight this year. Uh, that helps uh, a, a big gap in your lineup. Yeah, Nick Turdick moved down to 157 pounds. I think that's probably more his weight. Uh, again, it was, you know, he was in a position last year where he just was a, a little bit you know, behind Tyler Banks, who did a great job, but Nick again was in one of these guys, and it seems like uh, I was with our whole team. They got better as the year went on. He ended up placing fourth in the conference and, and had a great conference tournament. Um, he looks like a different person this year. His body's changed. He spent a lot of time in the weight room, um, and it's kind of weird to say that he spent a lot of time in the weight room to go down a weight class. But that was one of the things he needed to do. Is he needed to get stronger to wrestle at the Division One level. He spent the summer uh, with Luke. He was basically connected to his hip, and every time Luke went to lift, Nick was right there with him. And uh, he's done a lot. He's done a great job coming into the wrestling room. So his wrestling's improved. He is stronger, and he's a guy that. You know, is going to be. We're, we're going to count on pretty heavily to to win some matches, uh, and we're going to need them to. And you've got a bunch of people pushing Nick at that weight class, probably your deepest weight class. Yeah, we have probably three or four guys there: um, Sam Schwartz, up, Mike Caputo, Jay Lisney. Uh, we we definitely have some options for that weight class for guys that uh, don't. Uh, get in there. They can. We have some ability to redshirt them, but you know, the whole time it's going to be a challenge for Nick that he knows his his spots not just given to him that he's going to have to keep working uh, week in and week out. But, um, you know, I, I like the guys we have in there backing him up, but Nick should be our guy, and, and we look for uh, a big year out of him. With Nick uh, dropping down to 157, that leaves uh, 165 open, and that uh, issue was solved last week with the NCAA granting an extension of eligibility waiver to uh, graduate student, former Drexel standout Joe Booth. Yeah, Joe has been a, a great addition to the team. Uh, like you said, he just we found out officially just last week that he's going to get his sixth year and be able to compete for us. But from the day he walked into the room, he's a three-time NCAA qualifier, so he comes in here with a lot of experience and, and on a national level, and uh, just a lot of maturity. And he's kind of taken over one. Of, he's he's also become a leader on this team just with his work ethic. He's a guy that's been there all the time, uh, working out with Coach Valamont, getting his workouts in, doing the extra things. Uh, and just goes about his business. He, he's in there, wrestles hard, and, and expects a lot out of himself. So he was a, a huge pickup for us here in the off season, and uh, it's worked out really well for the team with just the weight class we needed, 165 pounder, and uh, he should fit in there real nice. And going to 174, Jermaine John returns. Uh, he kind of had a, a really nice bust out season last year, and, and he, he's another wrestler that keeps getting better. Yeah, Jermaine, you know, what he's done from his freshman to his sophomore year, I think he won eight or nine matches as a freshman, won 17 last year, was right there to be a national qualifier, kind of just missed that wild card uh, spot. But, you know, he, he's a guy that just keeps getting better. He's just really learning how to wrestle here. Uh, so he's going to be looking to fulfill that 174-pound spot again. Uh, again, we have some other guys that are going to be pushing, Vic Pushney and Dave Heitman and uh, Frank Affronti are going to be looking to get in that lineup. So um, we, we have some, it's another weight class where we have some depth, and I feel knowing what Jermaine was able to do last year, if he doesn't win the spot, I feel pretty comfortable who do, whoever uh, wins that wrestle-off is going to do a good job and represent the university well. And up to 184, a gentleman who <clears throat> was expected to come here last year took an Olympic redshirt year in, uh, in Dwight House at 184. Yeah, Dwight uh, was living out at the Olympic Training Center, had a great uh, um, uh, you know, deferment year, 
where he won the Junior Pan Am Games down in, in um, South America. You know, just had a, some really big wins um, throughout this past year, beating you know return uh, All American Alfonso Hernandez from uh, Wyoming, at, who was an All American at 197 pounds. So Dwight's a guy; he's a freshman, but uh, he's been wrestling with the best guys in the country. So we expect a lot from him right right out the gates. And that's a, also an area that's not very deep, but you have some options at 174. Yeah, so uh, what's going to happen there is we're going to have some guys wrestling. Uh, who, the losers of 174 pounds are going to go up and challenge at 184 pounds to just make sure that we have the best lineup we can possibly have at 174, 184, and 197 pounds. And the next weight class of 197 is a, is a major concern for you. Uh, what are you thinking at this point? Well, that's <laughs> we're sitting down as a staff and really trying to figure out what, what's going to be our best option to put the best team out there. Uh, right now we have Zill McGrew working his way down uh, from, from heavyweight to 197 pounds, and we have some guys that um, are you know, kind of either going to have to put on some weight and put on some size and go out there and wrestle for 197 pounds. It's not, a, it's not the ideal option that we would like to have, but you know, we need guys that are, are going to be willing to fight and compete out there. I think we have a couple guys that are going to be willing to do that, so we just got to make sure uh, we're, we're putting the best team out there. And like many uh, heavyweights that we've had in the past, the uh, Zeal as a heavyweight was a light heavyweight. So he was a very light heavyweight, so he can definitely make the weight. His weight has been coming down pretty steadily, and he's getting close to being able to make that 197-pound weight class. And with the graduation of Paul Snyder, uh, that leaves the heavyweight class open for Michael Hughes, a freshman? Yeah, Mike Hughes, uh, state champ from Smithtown West here in Long Island. We are very excited about him. He had a pretty dominant senior season, went down to the high school nationals and took second. So uh, just watching him work, uh, he's still really growing into the bo his body, which is scary at 6'4", 240 pounds. Um, He's kind of got all the tools necessary to be a very good heavyweight. Um, he needs to get better, a lot better wrestling wise, but physically, he, he's right there with guys as a freshman, which you don't typically have at the heavyweight division, so or the heavyweight weight class. So uh, we're going to expect a lot out of him, and uh, we need him to be anchoring down the lineup. What weight class are you most excited about this this season? You know, I would. I would just say, in general, I'm excited about this team. I think we have a lot of weight classes where we can be very competitive and be competing for guys to be uh, All-Americans and national champions. Uh, I mean, you look at 149 pounds, you either have Cody or Cam Tassari. Cam took fourth in the country as a freshman. I mean, that's a guy you got to think can, can win a national title. Luke Veit, I've seen make huge gains uh, this year, so I expect a lot out of him. Jamie going down to a more natural weight, Nick Turdick. You know, the way these guys came on last year at the end of the year and, and to see them progress throughout the summer, um, as a staff, we are excited about the opportunity that we're excited about this team. And uh, we open up on November 3rd against Rutgers, and I know as a staff and as the guys, we're, we're excited to see um, them wrestle some competition and see where we are. I think we're in a good spot right now. We're healthy. The guys are eager to wrestle. They come in. Um, and. and you know, it's been a long time I felt this good about a team, but um, they are they are very capable of putting up some big, big wins this year. And plus it's also the first season of the EIWA uh, wrestling membership for Hofstra. Uh, that's going to be a, a nice challenge. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to, I, I think this is probably the best team we've had, like I said, in about five years. Uh, so it doesn't hurt to be have this team going into the EIWA, which is definitely a more challenging conference with uh, Cornell and UPenn and Lehigh and uh, all the other teams that are in there. Um, it, it's a great challenge for us. We're excited about that opportunity. Um, it, it's just going to help us. It's going to make us a better program. It's going to make us better coaches. And I think it's going to create a better atmosphere for our home matches here as well. So it, it couldn't have been a more positive move for, for us to join the EIWA. Now jumping back to wrestle offs this Friday, uh, what matchup are you really looking forward to see? Yeah, you know, I, I think um, the 133-pound matchup will, will be interesting. Uh, again, with Passaro and Hudson, that should be a great matchup. And then I'm looking to see who kind of comes out of it at 174 and 184 pounds. Where uh, you know th those are two weight classes where. Uh, a little bit more unknown than 133 pounds. I think whoever we have in there is going to be is going to be really solid. So, you know, 184. I'm curious to see the guys wrestle. I'm curious to see Dwight down at 184 pounds wrestling uh, and seeing how he does. And and the other guys. I, I think Vic 
Tojani is a guy that has really come a long way uh, from last year to this year. He looks great in the room, and, and now I want to see how it transfers to an actual match when it's officiated and, um, you know, 3-2-2.